Hey guys, what's going on everybody? I'm here with my man, my brother, Mr. Jake. Bro, Jake, how are you, brother? Doing well. Thanks, how are you? man. Also awesome to have you on here, dude. Guys, I'm so excited to like introduce him into into like all the people who I know, uh, our community. I'm sure hope hope how do you already know who he is? He's he's in the community a lot. Um I'm gonna allow him to 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 introduce himself and somewhat of of his information and his life story, which is just great. But uh I want you all to know the the uh, main uh, reason I, I I asked him if you could do an interview with me, guys, is just I'm just admired by the way that like he lives life. You feel me? Like um, hopping out of planes, like 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 on the lake, like every weekend doing backpacking trips, just doing the. Uh, a lot. I know that there's a bunch of people who say, "Yeah, I'm living life to the fullest." He's really living life. Okay, so Jake, I'm happy to have you here, man. Appreciate your time, bro. Yeah, yeah um, so. Introduce yourself to sure. us, if you don't mind, some of your background, your history, everything yeah. you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to sit down and chat with you. And um, I actually moved to Reno, let's see, in 2011 for school. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, was looking for a place to play some baseball and actually had a little bit of a shift in life priorities and decided yeah. I wanted to focus more on some of the stuff you mentioned, the snowboarding, and backpacking, <laughs> and jumping out of planes and whatnot, but ended up finding a home here at the University of Nevada. Had a fantastic experience here. Met a lot of amazing, amazing people. Got to do some pretty, pretty cool stuff through some of the organizations mm -hmm. I was involved in. Um, and then my senior year, I actually interned with Microsoft and ended up having a good experience there for three months. And then uh, took some time right after that to do a little bit of backpacking. Did a worldwide mm -hmm. trip just to make sure I wanted to. You know, do what I was doing and do how big sold, worldwide like all the way around the world so I, I actually sold pretty much everything and bought a one-way ticket to Thailand and that was all I knew um, and then I knew about when I needed to get back and so I started in Thailand and worked you know across some of Asia through a little bit of the Middle East and then Europe and then and finishing in London and uh, flew back to New York City from there no way. So, yeah I made it all the way around which was, was a pretty neat experience you have to tell us about that yeah a little sure bit. yeah we, right. we can get into that I mean yeah. okay sorry Go yeah on. yeah and then uh, right after that I came back and started working full-time at Microsoft uh, here in Reno and I've been doing that for almost two years now and it's been an exciting ever-changing yeah. role and, and it's allowed me to grow quite a bit professionally and still mm -hmm. do a lot of the stuff I like to do which is really important to me yeah let me ask you about the backpacking thing. Sure. I'm like, okay, so 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 you so you you sell all your stuff. Yep. Like, how did you end up at that kind of like? Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go. I'm yeah. just gonna try. Like, how did you end up to, at, at that whole? Yeah, it was, it was something I always wanted to do, and and I had a kind of a unique opportunity with a little bit of time to not necessarily kill, but take advantage of. And and I had some stuff going on in my life that I wanted to you know, go digest somewhere in a mm. peaceful place. So I, I think it was a, a good time for me to do so. And I'm really happy I did. There's some experiences there that I will remember for the rest of my life and that definitely shaped me who I am today and mm. stuff I draw from every single day. So did you recommend that to other oh, people? Yeah. Young, old, whatever, young, just old, kind of old, <laughs> kind of young. Yeah, everybody should do it. It's Explore the world. It, it was amazing. I mean, some of the stuff that you see and get to experience in other countries. It's, it's very humbling to mm. see how the rest of the world is, but it's also you know, very, very good for the human spirit, I think, to get out and have some adventure. Yeah, man. So. Have you always been that way, just kind of like adventurous? Like, you know, I'm just going to try it, see what happens. Yeah, yeah I think I, I have been most of my life a pretty adventurous human being. I, uh, when I was 14 years old, I got in a pretty major snowboarding accident that I was laid up for quite some time in, the, in a wheelchair and was in a kind of a near-death experience and that I think accelerated my appreciation for life wow. and desire to, to, to go out and do some of this stuff and it, it's as cliche as it sounds it was like you know you realize every day is a gift and hmm. if you don't go do these things now you may never get to do them so hmm. it was definitely a driver there. Let me ask you this then, dude. So, um, I mean, we're already on the topic. Yeah. I was holding this one for at least for later, but I just yeah. have to ask you about it now. Yeah. How many, uh, how many times you, how many times have you hopped out of a plane? So I'm at fifty-one jumps, I think. Fifty-one yeah. jumps since yeah. when? So I did my first tandem jump actually, uh, probably three or four years ago. So that's when you jump out with somebody, you're, you're strapped to them, and then I did it one more time. 
And then this year, actually, uh, on January 28th, which was the 10 year anniversary of my snowboarding accident, I was like, what would be a good way to go celebrate this? So I went and I went nice. did another tandem jump, and actually signed up for the course to get certified. So since January, like 49 of those wow. you know, 51 jumps have come, and it's been mostly out of airplanes, a few times out of a helicopter. And wow. Yeah, it's been pretty neat. I'm, I'm hooked. How, how did that like start? What was your like, you know, yeah, explanation? Like, you know, a lot of people say like adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush. But for me, it's kind of the opposite. It's like a, I've heard the term adrenaline zen, and I hmm. kind of like that. I, I I feel extremely at peace when I'm doing these types of things. Like that, when I'm flying out of an airplane, it, it sounds like a super intense, like panicked environment. But you have to be so calm and, and gather yourself. It, it's extremely peaceful for me, and so I get that combination of like rush and calm that. I seem to chase and be somewhat addicted to. That's crazy, yeah. man. So is that, so is, is like hopping out of airplanes and stuff, is that kind of like a, um, evolution of, of, of like, of the accident you had when you were, yeah, and just yeah. kind of, you know, living life? Yeah, totally. Things? I mean, when I was younger, I, I didn't really understand what that feeling was, but I, I, I knew when I felt it and I, I kind of pushed the limits of it a little bit. And then hmm. I think after my snowboarding accident, I got a little bit more intelligent about those types of things. <laughs> hopefully. And, and, yeah, <laughs> hopefully, right? <laughs> yeah, no more, no more time in the hospital <laughs> like that. That was so... Um, yeah, it was just it kind of been an evolution in my hmm. whole life, and you know it's a calculated risk and, yeah. and whatnot. So. Now I saw some also of your mom jumping out with you. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. First of all, that woman has all my respect, man. Yeah. It's crazy. She's a badass lady. <laughs> She's a badass lady. How uh, how did that come about? Yeah. Is, is she adventurous too, just like you? Is that where you get it from? Yeah. So I, I would say no, actually, and it, we were actually. <laughs> Is kind of how we ended up jumping out of an airplane. We were in in Hawaii in March, and you know she was going through some some challenging stuff in her life. And um, we we're doing this. It's called the Road to Hana. This this place over in Maui where there's all these different hikes you can do and waterfalls you can go to. And we we're doing this hike. It was called the Bamboo Forest. And mm -hmm. we were coming up to this hike, and it's enclosed in bamboo. And she starts having all this anxiety and claustrophobia. And you know, I literally was watching this woman shrink down and, and oh, wow. almost sink into herself. And you know, she started crying, and it was this really intense moment. And, and we were able to get her through that through breath, and you know, kind of focusing on some, some different positive things. And we got her in into the bamboo forest, and, and she opened up a little bit. Hmm. And we're hiking and hiking, and me and my buddy are, you know, helping her every step of the way because she's you know panicked. And we eventually get to this waterfall, and she looks at the waterfall, and she sees that she's made it, and she's just like, opens up completely. Wow. Yeah, and then she jumps, it like you know, kind of wades into the water, and is underneath the waterfall, and I, she like dunks down, and she literally emerges like a new woman with all this energy. Wow. And shortly thereafter, we're driving up the road, and we see this waterfall that I had jumped off before. Yeah. And me and my buddy hike up to the waterfall, and it's probably 35, 40 feet, and we both jump off of it. Great time, smiles ear to ear. And we come back, and my mom looks at me, and she goes, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. It was so uncharacteristic of her, and she had never never jumped off of anything like that. And no me and my buddy were like, uh, no way. <laughs> And I look at her and I look back at the waterfall and like knowing what she had going on in her life, I was like, you know what, this might be a really, really good therapeutic thing for her. Mm. So sure enough, she charges up the hill, like looks over the waterfall and just sends it off, no hesitation. No just way. Just like complete, I, I was, honestly, I was blown away. I thought we were going to be up there like, all right, jump on the <laughs> No, she we got the video on my Instagram page, but we like turn, she gives me a high five and just jumps off the cliff. It was amazing, and, and I think in that moment she realized what she's capable of adventure-wise. Wow. So we talked about skydiving, and sure enough, about a month and a half after the waterfall, she's jumping out of airplanes, and wow. it, it just showed, I think, the, the therapeutic power of some of these adventure-type activities, hmm. and it gave, I think, her a little bit of insight into why I like to do the things that I do, and hmm. I think it can be a powerful thing for people. That's fascinating, yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I, and here I am thinking she's like this, like no, adventurous, yeah, yeah. like always been like that. Yeah, not at all. And she was 61 years old when she jumps out of an airplane, wow. and uh, you know, 
tiny little woman kindergarten teacher not like an adrenaline junkie at all and mm. it just shows that it's never too late and you, you don't have to conform to the identity that that just mm. isn't the type of stuff that I do and I think she proved that and it was amazing for her and so her thing now with me is just just jump that's her <laughs> kind of her life thing that she draws strength from from the waterfall experience and the skydiving experience and you know I think it's pretty cool wow expand on that if you can Jake that that um idea of like like it's never so late in life yeah. or or just just kind of i mean like a lot of people are in in a routine totally they're in their thing you know yeah. we're not exploring right. we're not hopping out of planes right. we're not hopping off of off of like a high cliff or yeah. whatever like I, I i guess how did that happen in her and, and how is i able to, to kind of apply into someone else right now who's yeah. like hoping to have that kind of like you know, yeah, adventure totally. freedom. Totally, and I think with a lot of, it's never the right time for people, you know, young people like us, it's often, well, I'm not ready to go do something like that, or, you know, I need to really focus on my career, or really focus on building these different things, and then you get later in life, and then you pass that identity on to yourself of, oh, it's too late for me, there's no way that I can do that, and I think that that time paradox is really, really interesting, the, the effect that it has on people, but what I've seen in my own life, and with my mom, and other family members, and close friends, I mean, if you take that step and just jump into the moment hmm. and, and do these things, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I was, I was terrified to go backpack alone um, <laughs> around the world, and I, was, I had a lot of fear the first time I jumped out of an airplane alone, but if you do just jump into it, I think you realize the power of that present moment, it, hmm. it overcomes all the doubts, and it, it, just like the mind, I think it's a muscle the more often you do it, the more often you do just expand yourself and jump into these things, the easier it becomes. And mm. the result is, is a beautiful thing. Yeah. So. so you said the first time you jumped out, you were like completely scared. Oh yeah. Right, okay, so help me out with this then. So, yeah. so how does that, um, uh, because having like a fear, it's an emotion obviously, okay. but it's very real. Oh, it very can shake, real. I mean, how your mom was just kind of shriveling yeah, in that yeah. moment, like a lot of people out there aren't afraid just, hop out of planes but do like like explore new opportunity for their uh for as like a profession or yeah, start a new yeah. business or ask a guy out ask a right. you, you know what i mean totally. so so how did you overcome that and yeah. and how would you share with anybody who's on here now of okay this is how you can hopefully you know overcome that, that yeah obstacle. totally i think the you know jump in tandem you've got somebody strapped to you yeah. and they're doing all the work so i mean don't get me wrong the first time you jump out of an airplane period your brain is on overload it's like this should not be happening this is not natural you know, yeah. tunnel vision and that helps but you know with the, the actually getting certified thing and jumping without a coach it was definitely an elevated level of, of nervousness yeah and, uh, i for me the way that i overcome this this that's kind of like lock up fear the the fear like not being enough or not being loved which i think you can apply to any of these situations for sure um, for me it's always been meditation and the breath hmm. and um, a story in particular about skydiving is i was in my aff course which is you know, when you get certified to become a student so you can work towards your different a licenses and for whatever reason it just wasn't clicking with me like yeah. the body position wasn't clicking with me and my instructor was having to you know help me get extra effort to pull my parachute which is obviously an, an important thing yeah and, and so I, there was i think jump number four and I, I had to I had to figure it out I had to do it and I was driving up in the airplane or riding up in the airplane and, you know we're at 10,000 feet and I actually I had a flashback so as part of my backpacking trip um, I spent some time in a monastery learning some meditation tactics hmm. and the, the monks in the monastery always talked about your mind being like a drunk monkey and hmm. how you can calm that with the power of the breath and so that's what I felt you know the fear the fear in my mind was like a drunk monkey you know <laughs> you know looking, Good at, looking at everything and you know the fear of this fear of that fear of this and I think it's the same thing when you start a business or you know ask that girl out for the first time it's like your brain goes to every possible thing that could go wrong so in that moment Moment, I was able to center myself through the breath and focus on the present moment and know mm. that I had you know, the training and, and the knowledge that I could make this happen and mm. I was able to apply that muscle in that moment and it was a really good thing and you know I would encourage people to draw on their past experiences whether that's through meditation or just a simple deep breath or whatever it is to like push through that moment because right. on the other side of the jump it's, it's spectacular. Mm. I like that. Have you always meditated? 
I, I got into meditation right after my snowboarding accident, um, and that was one of the reasons I wanted to go to Thailand, actually, because it's a hub for Buddhism and meditation right. and, and some of that study. Um, so before that, I, I definitely dabbled in it, and then after that, it became a very serious part of my daily routine. So, hmm. so then it's... I think it's super important what you said, Jake, in that it's, it's a practice. Totally. Right? It's, it's a practice. And like a lot of people see individuals like yourselves who are like successful in their career and then jumping at planes and doing all these adventurous things. Like, yeah. man, that's just how he was born. Yeah. Right? And yeah. he, he, that's just how his, like, how he operates, how his mind works. Yeah. I think a, like, a, like a lot of individuals overlook this fact that, yo, it is in your control. It takes practice. Totally. Like our mind is a trainable yes. thing. Right? How, how important was that for for you to understand and just unlock like yeah I mean, you know? it's like i think if i could attribute one thing in my life to helping me get to where i wanted and then continuing to help me meet different milestones in my life it's it's the training of, of the mind and the hmm. body and in the spirit too and it's amazing how big of a difference you know working on yourself can make you know i'm a huge fan of meditation like health and fitness paying really close attention to to what i put in my body and it, it is it's, it's a constant effort and, and constant work to to make sure you're doing the right things to kind of shape it because right. you know i i really don't believe that that people are just born with things i i'm a firm believer that the growth mindset and, mm. and being able to work on yourself will take you far far further than you know just relying on your natural skills you know granted there's some people that are very naturally gifted yeah. at certain things and, and they're able to take advantage of that too but I, I do not think the power of, of working on yourself can be understated mm -hmm. Amen How old are you Jake? I'm 24 24? Yeah Explored the world yeah. variety of parts around the world jumped out of 51 airplanes was yes, it? Yes sir yeah. 51 yeah. doing a bunch of, and he was being very uh, modest and humble earlier he was the ASUN for presidents which is ASUN is the Food and body um, at the University of Nevada. So you, you, you've achieved a lot yeah. in a short amount of time, right? Um, I found that, that, actually, I didn't find. Yeah. I stole this from an audio podcast I heard recently. Yes. Um, uh, morning routine yes. in an intelligent individual is a sign of ambition. Yes. Okay. You're an intelligent, intelligent individual. Yeah. You have the ambition, obviously. You're doing yeah. all these amazing things sure. in your career or whatnot. Sure. Uh, what is your morning routine like? Yeah, so I've, I've crafted a bit of a morning routine, and I think uh, it's definitely helps me get my day going. And, and days where I slip, I definitely feel different throughout the day, and I would 100% agree with the importance of it. So for me, uh, I never used to be an early riser. It was just very hard for me to get out yeah. of bed, which I think is something for a lot of people. Um, now I really try to wake up between the 4.30 and 6 mark uh, a.m., mm. just depending on how my previous day was going. Um, I'll usually start my morning with Bulletproof Coffee. I don't know if nice. you've you heard or used that. It's a, a highly recommend Bulletproof Coffee. You're a Tim Ferriss fan. Yeah. I love Tim Ferriss. Good, very good. Yeah, so I'll usually start up with a cup of coffee and then uh, go do morning cardio. That was a habit I picked up from the fitness competition stuff, mm -hmm. which I, I need you've done as well I usually do like 30 to 45 minutes of cardio and then come back home and uh, do about 15 to 20 minutes of meditation and journaling to start my day uh, I actually skip breakfast to do intermittent fasting so hmm. I don't eat until noon or one every day so you know my morning is mostly dedicated to priming my mind mm. and, and body for the day ahead so. how important is that man to to, to have your things set Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, before the day comes, what, yeah. what's that like? I would say it's one of the most important things, and I think I'll preface that too, that like it's, there are times where you slip, it's just, and, and mm -hmm. I think those are the times when you don't do your routine that you feel how important it actually is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I cannot understate the importance of it, and a lot of the people I look up to and some of the people that I read, everyone, it's like morning routine, morning routine, and it's about finding what works for you. There's no cookie-cutter right. way to do it. There's some really good suggestions that I would recommend like meditation and physical activity I think if you can implement those in one way or another mm. it, it, you'll reap the dividends for sure mm. who do you read and who do you listen to I'm a big Tony Robbins fan um, I went to one of his conferences at the end of last year How was that? it was amazing yeah. yeah yeah and it was kind of the summation of, uh, of a lot of the reading I did of his and, and listened to some of his his tapes as well I'm a big Tim Ferriss fan uh, what I really like about Tim Ferriss is he's taken 
so many brilliant minds and successful people and condense them into some really consumable materials mm-hmm. um, tools of titans i just finished that it was mm-hmm. a fantastic book profiling some of the most successful people in the world mm-hmm. for our work week i was a big fan of um, and then yeah i've got a big bookshelf at home that I'll, I'll pick off slowly and you know i also like to read some of the the more spiritual stuff like some books on buddhism and meditation mm-hmm. and, you know eckhart tolle and Pema chodron and you know they're good to kind of keep that balance too right you always been a reader. Have you always been like an absorber of other people's information? And I, I don't. Knowledge? I have not always been a reader. When I was younger, I would read, you know, like Harry Potter and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, read for pleasure. But I, I think it was probably when I was around eighteen or nineteen that I realized the power of reading and the fact that you have access to all of these different minds in, right. in the form of a book and there's so many people that have done like it doesn't matter what your goal is chances are there's somebody who has either done something similar or Mm -hmm. maybe even done the exact same thing and if you can learn from them and learn from their mistakes and and learn from their successes it can accelerate your progress so so far Hmm. so okay and you uh, briefly i mentioned this earlier uh, you did a a excuse me a a a a a, uh, physique Yes. Competition like 2016 was it? Yeah, yes, yeah, so about a year ago. About a year ago. Yeah, yeah. And if I remember correctly, you won like uh, somewhere to top five. Because I know they only give you know the big nice uh, uh, bronze uh, things for for people in the top five. Yeah, yeah. Um, was that the only, uh, um, was that the uh, the very uh, first competition you've ever done? Yeah, that was the first competition I had ever done, and what an experience it was. I mean, you you, you know yeah. you've done it. It's I didn't place, by the yeah. way. I, I didn't get the trophies like Jake did. So anyway, no, but it's a it's a mental grind. I mean, I think yeah. it's more of a mental game than it's a physical game because you you have to be so on point with your food and your workouts. I mean, you're working out you know from two to three hours a day. Mm. You, know, you start in the morning, and I was hitting it after work too. And every meal has to be prepped down to the exact ounce. And mm. you know, it was that discipline, practicing that muscle of discipline. I think was was really good and, and mm. a really awesome experience. It, but boy, was it a challenge. Mm. So yeah first one and I have not done one since um, my girlfriend and I are kind of floating around the idea of maybe doing one together early next year oh, wow. so I think it'd be a fun experience together. and you were t- 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 what was your overall um, uh, final place so I have fourth place yeah. fourth place which which is tough because yeah. yeah. it's, it's not like there Just was barely made that trophy cut <laughs> four out of four it wasn't yeah. four out of four trust me um, okay let me uh, zoom out really quick on your sure. life okay you, <laughs> um, ASUN president, right? Had success here. Uh, you did a physique show, some hardware. You went home, right? You're a young man. You 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 have a set, you know, professional, uh, like a lane right now. Uh, so you're winning in a, in a lot of areas of life, sure. right? I mentioned that Jake, you know, not to to hype you up or whatever. But but because there's someone out there right now who sees, you know, people like yourself, like, man, he just got it all together. Yeah. And I'm going to keep going back to him, man, because there are, like, a, a lot of people out there who just think, oh, he, he's just, you know, one of those people who are just abundantly blessed and talented. You do have talent. You are intelligent. You, there's a, Yes, but there's something else there, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, what would you say that is to, to like, apply, like, a winning a mindset to just all areas of life. Yeah, I think what is that? the answer is some really dark hours, to be honest with you. You know, going through some, some very challenging times, and I think using that adversity as a tool. And unfortunately, I think we live in an era where it's really easy to paint a picture of somebody based on social media. Mm. And, you know, I'm guilty of that too. I mean, you only post the good times. And, right. and so it's, it's easy to perceive something that's all sunshine and rainbows, but, you know, there's definitely challenges. and. I think some of the most phenomenal and inspiring people that I've come across in my life and that I draw inspiration from are the ones who had very tough times and and were able to take those and draw from them and use those for their success. So I think my advice to anybody, and I remind myself a lot of this too, is is, uh, don't put too much weight in, you know, believing that your circumstances are set. I, I think if you, you set your mind on something and you find the right people and mentors and you really, really commit to that, mm. you can overcome a lot of things. And I think identifying your strengths within that too. I mean, a lot of people see things within themselves as a detriment or a negative, mm. but 
I think some of the most successful people are the ones that have yeah. turned that around and used it as their ultimate strength. So mm. uh, I, I would encourage people to find mentors, absolutely. And I would encourage people to to realize that it's not all sunshine and rainbows and there, there will be some very, very challenging times. And mm. It's trying to push through that and get to the other side that, right. that really, really helps out. Expand on the mentors real quick, yeah. man, because there's some people, again, out there, and I'm also guilty of it at yeah. a certain point, so I, I got it. Yeah, I got it all together. Right, it's all right here somewhere. Yeah. I just got to keep digging until I find it. Totally. Right, how important is it to just kind of humble yourself at some totally, point? Yeah. Shut up, listen, ask questions. Right, yeah, yeah. to have that person. I think what I found is like no matter what, like just when you think you've got it figured out, that's when life knocks you on your ass. Like, and it will do that repeatedly <laughs> yeah. over and over okay. and over again. And so having a, a, a network. So I've got. Um, kind of a couple of different circles in my life. I've got, you know, th- three or four, maybe five friends that they, they're just really close, really tight in the network. And I know that I can count on those guys and gals for anything. And so that's one level of support. And then you've got my girlfriend, which is a huge level of support. And my family, that's a huge level of support. But I think outside of that, it's also very important to have mentors in, in whatever you're trying to achieve. I've got one individual in my life, an older gentleman who, who's had some success in business. And I can always count on him to tell me how it is and humble mm. me and, and remind me that I don't have it all figured out <laughs> and that I am going to make mistakes. But he does it in a way that... I know he cares about my development, and I think that's really important to do. So, I think if you don't have a mentor, finding one would be it would be extremely beneficial to, to yeah. anyone listening to this. And I think a lot of people feel uncomfortable with with seeking out mentors and asking mentor for mentorship. And I've seen it happen a couple ways. Sometimes it happens really organically, and just you know someone in your life who's who's where you would like to be or close to where you would like to be, and you get to know them, and it becomes a relationship, and then you know they're able to guide you through that path. And then I've also seen successful relationships and this has been in my life too where you actually ask someone to be your mentor Hmm. Um, I've done this at Microsoft I've I've asked some higher level individuals would you mentor me and they are always so excited and willing willing to do so I think because chances are if they've made it to that level they had somebody along the way that helped them get there so very almost impossible to do do things in life on your own alright Jake explain to me this then there's there's a a lot of people out there, like like how you alluded to earlier, that are on social media right now, who totally. are saying, you know, like uh, like um, I'm living life, right. you know, uh, to the fullest extent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, at least you know from the outside looking in, you know, totally. your life, you're living it very uh, purposefully. Yeah. And the absolutely. things you do and the right. things that, that that all of your energy is in, into right now, right? Totally. So, um, how did you get up to that point? Yeah. Where you're like, hey, I, I'm gonna do the things that I I like doing. Right. Like you're at the lake all the time. Yeah. You yeah. just um, you were on the East Coast a couple days ago, yeah, you know, you and your yeah. girlfriend were out there. How did that whole thing happen? Is that a switch? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, no, it's definitely a switch. And I think the intention thing was, it was some of the best advice I've ever received was actually right when I got to the university, somebody told me, well, have a college experience so that when you're walking across the stage at graduation, you can look back and say, wow, I really took advantage of my time at the mm. University of Ohio. I was like, wow, that's, that's powerful. So when I was at the university, I was, it was very intentional and creating experiences so that when I walked across the stage at graduation, I said, wow, I had an amazing experience um, at the University of Nevada. And thankfully, I was able to do that. I walked across the stage and I looked back on my, my four years. And I was like, wow, that was a f- fantastic time. And mm. so I thought, okay, how can I expand that? So now for me it's it's live a life that when you're on your deathbed looking back on your life hopefully surrounded by your loved ones you can look back and say wow I really lived and have absolutely no regrets or remorse about the life that you lived and Hmm. it's kind of my guiding philosophy and so to align with that I really make it a priority to do the things that I love to do um, you know you mentioned being out on the East Coast so that was for work but it was a environment where I was surrounded by brilliant minds and I, I love to do that and then I just did a, a backpacking trip on the Lost Coast in California where my girlfriend and I had the chance to completely escape the, the yeah. hustle and bustle and no cell phone service and that's something I really like to do and you know, going up to the lake and skydiving and snowboarding it's all stuff that I love to do and I think it's important to remember that if you don't schedule time to do that and if you don't make it a priority in your life, no one else is going to do it mm. for you. So you have to be intentional about setting that time and, and you know, work really hard, you know, devote yourself to your job, but make sure that you don't forget to do the things that set your soul on fire. So hmm. it's been a, been a priority for me and it's something I constantly have to manage. It's really, really easy to slip away from that if you're not conscious, but yeah. if you make it a priority, it's, it's pretty rewarding. I love that, dude. Like I... I, I <laughs> I hope like 
Do you guys understand? So he said he was on the East Coast right now for work, on a work trip, right? Um, girlfriend flew out there. So we actually, so that is funny. I, I got on a plane from the East Coast, mm-hmm. got back at midnight. Sorry. Early, yeah. Yes. And then we woke up early the next day and headed to the Lost Coast. Right, right. I'm sure you were exhausted yeah, when you got home. Right? East Coast, yeah. you have yeah. the jet lag, right? Yeah. But that was intent. That yeah. was like a purposeful thing. I, I love what you said, Jake. You know, we all have lives. Yeah. You know, it's not like, hey, like I'm, I'm a millionaire by the start. I, I grew up with a rich dad. Or, or I didn't, right? I, I didn't inherit you have a choice. I, I think that's 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 kind of like the, the underlying theme here is that you do have a choice in what you do if if you have an awesome job or if you right. have a shit job or right. if you have a great life or if your life is up and coming. You have a choice to do what you want to do, right? Totally. Is that totally. yeah. that's, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was through just the holistic life view. And then I think it's also been really relevant in my professional career too. I've been fortunate enough to have managers that have allowed me to somewhat shape my career in in the sense that I get to do the things I'm good at every day. And I would encourage people to do that. Like no matter what job you're in currently, look for opportunities to do what you're best at and what gives you energy. Mm. But the most important thing is that accountability and responsibility that is on you and no one else is gonna do it for you. Mm. So I cannot stress that enough, it is on you. Yeah, how does your ideal day look like? My ideal day. I think starting out with the morning routine, yep. I really do yep. feel, feel a lot better when I do that. Um, I, I do love days where I, I get a chance to solve some sort of problem, whether that's you know at work, in, in, my, in my day-to-day job, or some of the entrepreneurial ventures that I'm involved in. And then I, I love a day where I get to do something that you know kind of gives me the goosebumps of life, you know, jumping out of an airplane, or snowboarding, or you know being out on the lake, and doing wakeboard and surfing, that type of stuff. And then I think most importantly is like spending time with, with the people I really, really care about I, it's really easy sometimes to slip into kind of this like isocentric mm. um, you know stay away from people when you're driven in success but i found that you know experiences amplified by love is the ultimate wealth i read that the other day it was a steve jobs quote and i was like wow that is so accurate wow so i think the day having all those activities but then when i'm with people that i really really care about it just makes it that much better wow experience is amplified by yeah, love is yeah. the ultimate wealth. Yeah, yeah, he, he was a pretty, pretty love powerful, that. powerful thing. Huh, I love that, man. Yeah. Um, what would you recommend, Jake, to someone out there? And you hit on it already, like, yeah. all throughout, but uh, someone out there who, who is, is, is afraid to start, yeah. afraid to kind of hop out of, this is just who I am, this right. is my zone or whatever. Right. What would you say to him or her to just see this other area of life that exists? Just what jump, you? yeah. <laughs> just jump. jump yeah just jump no i i think the first step is identifying that you have something else that you want to go after and mm-hmm. then i really believe one of the most important things you can do is find a mentor or, or a resource for that matter to help you get there you know it's funny sometimes i look at books as mentors hmm. like it's, it's a pretty powerful thing that in this day and age you have the ability to go pick up a book or download an ebook or you know, listen to an audio book that is literally the mind of, of of the greatest yeah. human beings on planet earth and you can draw strength and information and mentorship from reading and studying too so you know, don't get it set that it has to be this human that you're interacting with constantly i mean that's ideal obviously but if you don't have that or if you're struggling to find that you can start right in, right away with with studying um, and then i think making a plan and working backwards to that plan and you know want to make sure it's it's measurable mm-hmm. like if you say you want to have 100 skydives by you know the end of yeah. this year you're not just going to show up to the airport, walk on a plane, and jump a hundred times. You know, you're going to find a coach. You're going to go through the certification process. You're going to learn the different mm-hmm. skill sets, and you know, you're going to have to budget your time and money to, to make all this stuff happen. So, yeah. I think once you have that goal in mind and, and the resources to, and the guidance to help you achieve that goal, it's a lot easier to work back. Hmm. Love it. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate that. Yeah. So. I'm at the end here now. I'm going to ask you a couple uh, rapid fire sure. questions. I want to hear the very first thing that comes to mind. Sure. Yeah. Be quick, quick, quick. Okay. We'll see how it goes, man. All right. Something that you would like, to, something you want to do but haven't done yet. Take a company public. Hey. I'm gonna have to ask you about that later, man. Yeah. You got some entrepreneurial ventures yeah, yeah, going. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a huge. Yeah. Like, I was thinking about something else. Yeah. That's good, man. Okay. Uh, uh, pet peeve. Pet peeve. Negative. Negative thoughts. Negative mm. words. Um, the the power of language. Yeah. 
could go really deep into that. But yeah, negative words. Biggest negative confused. words. Yeah. I'll bring the negative vibes around here, guys. Uh, the uh, last thing you do before bed? Meditate. Yeah. Wow. Clean. Okay. The craziest thing you've did, that you've done? Hitchhiked from southern Turkey to northern Turkey around the border of Syria. No. <laughs> This can't even be. <laughs> I need like expand on that. Hold on. Expand it's on that one really quick, it's bro. It's it's rapid fire. Come on, man. All right, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, uh, last one is a fear of yours. Fear of mine. I think getting to the end of my life and looking back and and not having it been this you know beautiful, loving, passionate, lifelong experience full of adventures. Dude, you're you're a freaking fantastic guy, Jake. <laughs> it was it was an honor, like hearing about your experiences, hearing about you. He's only 24, guys. We got like 80 more years of this stuff to go. So we'll see where you end up, Jake. Jake, I appreciate you, yeah, man. Thanks, brother. You're a boss, dude. I hope you guys were able to like learn some interesting information about Jake. It, 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 if anybody's interested in hooking up with you on Instagram, yeah. how they hook up with you or yeah. anywhere. Yeah, definitely. Um, Jake Pereira. It's J-A-K-E-P-R-E-I-R-A. Uh, Instagram page. You can reach out to me there. Yeah, happy to chat with anybody. Crazy videos, crazy photos, guys. We love it. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Jake. I appreciate you. Thanks, boss. I'll let you guys next time. Peace.